Hello once again witchy people and yes it's another crafting video. I think I'm going to do a crafting video a week whilst I'm crafting. Include you all in my madness. <laughs> so <clears throat> I've got a habit of saying so all the time. I, I'm just so very very sorry. Okay I finished the inside and it turned out a bit bigger than I thought it would but part of that is because of all the ephemera and leftovers stuck in the back so <laughs> I, mean, I can squash it a bit <laughs> but anyway so I wanted to do the cover and I remembered I had this paper bag which I have just totally demolished <laughs> um, I, ha I did accidentally tear it um, <clears throat> but a little bit of double sided sticky tape on the inside will soon um, fix that the reason why I've chosen this bag is sorry I'm just waiting for this glue to come out um, I was really stuck on what to use for the cover and I had an old skirt I was going to use which is a, like a khaki green colour but unfortunately let's see if I can change that light a little bit um, it looks really grey brown which okay khaki is a grey brown <laughs> but it, it just doesn't match in with the greens that I've got in the book so that went out the window I also have an old jacket I was going to tear up but it's too grey um, but whilst I was looking for this bag I came across I finally found my grandfather's old he, he was a naval policeman and I found his old, one of his old ledges which I had been using look debit credit information balance date I was using it for, to keep my um bank balance in order so there's only a few pages of that left but there is this one left um, and I have used a few pages of that that's got green I don't know if it's supposed to be green or, or faded to green or but yeah that's gone a little bit brown around the edges and some of the original plain papers of my grandfather's now these have fared really well as you can see this has gone a little bit I don't know how the paper clip is, um, but I know the file folder and the papers inside are from 1963. Doing well for that age. Now, and I was trying to think how we, um, you know, what the recommendation, what, what the requirements are for being retro, vintage, or antique. Oh, excuse me. So, retro. Um, I think is anything in age not style but in age so if it's retro it's 25 years or over I think <laughs> if it's vintage it has to be 50 years or over and if it's antique it has to be 100 years or over I think that's the rough sort of like recommendation so this is definitely vintage Um, so yeah, I was quite pleased to have found it and like I, said, I have I have used some of these papers in the book. But it kind of gives me that link to my ancestry, to, to my you know, to my family, which I really like. So Oh and I am doing the Eye of Newt thing I the thing is I was doing birds and then I realized just how many plants and sort of thing that we associate with bits of birds especially birds eye anyway so yeah I kind of sent myself down a bit of a rabbit hole looking through all my old books and things so I've cut the bottom off of this 
and I have taken off the watch me flippity do does <laughs> handles and what I think I might do is simply measure this um, and cut it wrap it around the book and then um, oh crikey I'll go from there but I'm not too sure what <laughs> this is what kind of mood I'm in okay yeah so if I say right it needs to be cut if that's there it needs to be cut let me just get a pencil and mark this pencil. Oh, my man would be smacking me around the back of my head right now. Pencil? It's not a pencil, it's a pencil. <laughs> Don't you just love nans? Nans, nannies, grandmas, grannies, nonnas. Few of the other bits. Funny enough, in the whole book, I think I bought this book because I, I don't like sunflowers, but I loved this. And I thought this would go really lovely inside. And I've used a strip off the side and two little holes, and that's all I've used in the whole book. Um, this was this paper, this is the original coordinations paper, and I think I bought this round about the time I moved or just before I moved and that was what 16 years ago oh dear so hmm old <laughs> give it a few more years that'd be vintage as well <laughs> so I'm thinking the, only, the best way I can do this is to refold up this bag make sure it's all lined up at the top and then cut it on the mark that I made <laughs> oh down there yeah so if I make sure it's all even at the top easiest way for me to do it. What have I done with my... There it is. Paper trimmer. Oh. How faithful my purple cow was. Broken and been mended and yet still does the trick. I haven't got another one of these bags so if this all goes feet tong then I am utterly ah uh, I've forgotten what the word is now up a <coughs> creek up up the creek Okay, that didn't turn out too well, but I'm wondering whether I could sew some of this. Oh. Uh, 
So I'm just noticing how uneven it is. So should I just cut that bit off? I mean, I do like wrapped books, you know, when it's all wrapped and neat and everything. However, it's not always the thing that I want to do. So I just yeah, that one. <laughs> oh dear, Ben's not with it today. So, yeah, thought I'd have just a crafting day with another crafting day with a bit of a chat and I was um doing a video I did a video and I got a couple of comments and, and I understand that I am not always the most lucid and clear speaking of people and I get my words cafuddled sometimes but the thing is and I'm not saying this is an excuse I'm saying this is a reason I come from a generation of people where you are expected yeah it's expected that you are or it's assumed that you are polite that you are unbiased um, that you are fair non-judgmental this is these things I was brought up with this is my generation for the most part so when someone says points out the way I say something it's not because I'm ignorant or because I have a biased view of something usually it's just because I expect you to understand that I am that person I'm non-judgmental you know live and let live and all the rest of it and I, I think other people should be the same and they are unfortunately not always that way. So if you hear some strange shouting in the background, my future son-in-law, <laughs> the man my daughter sleeps with that lives in our house, <laughs> playing an online game. So yeah, that, that, that would be why. So what can I do round this to make it more interesting? Could I put lace round it? And I could sew. And I could even try and sew right the way round. And if I did that, I could cover up the inside and whether I could cover up the sewing or not doesn't matter. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. And obviously I want to want to do something on the front that makes it interesting because just having that that's boring so I think I'm gonna get my Timmy Holtz ruler because that's the only one I've got I think it's the Timmy Holtz yep so it's got these lovely holes in it all the way through um yeah, so I can just put this down here and punch a few holes all the way round and then all the way round and then all the way round and then stick the this on and then sew it <sighs> or if I change my mind use something else so I'm going to get my foam bit out and punch a few holes while well, sitting here <laughs> wishing I could do something more productive I'm not being very productive I've got so many things on the go I've got the I have new series that I am still trying to carry on but also in that same vein I have also got to fill in um, my book whilst I do it because that, that's kind of the, the impetus that it gave me. To, if I impetus, I did it again. 
impetus. It, it's given me a reason to fill in the book <coughs> and to carry on doing the series. It's kind of like one's driving me to do the other. I've got um, a project that I started that I want to do for my mum, uh, which is um, quite a religious project um, for her religion. Um, it's very Christian, which I'm hoping she'll love. Um, and the thing is, the, the weird thing is, I quite I find it quite interesting delving into other religions and other belief systems and other faiths and spiritualities. Because, not because I'm searching for something, but because I think it helps you understand other people better. And I, that that's important. And if you can understand them, you can, you can understand why they think of you in the way that they do sometimes. You know, and also, this is going to sound really awful from a person who claims to be unbiased and fair and non-judgmental. Um, when they come at you with arguments and barbs and want a bit of a fight, you have a bit of ammunition because you know a little, little something of their faith. So when they say, for instance, if it was a, a fundamentalist Christian who goes on, you know, Jesus will save you, you know, uh, or <clears throat> my favourite, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, which is nowhere in the Bible, by the way. And I know I've said this so many times. I think it's one of the first things I ever said on my channel. It doesn't appear in the Bible. It's it's just a... Thou, it's, it's someone who doesn't say a witch. It's a very unusual word that when it's... Um, what's the word you know when you put it from one language to another <laughs> when when it was put into the English language see my brain's not working anyway um, it was basically one who murders by poison one who poisons and murders or one who kills by poison it doesn't it wasn't which um so yeah, you, you have an argument against the, you know, you, or you have a, if, if you want to get involved in that to and fro, if they, if they, you know, want to have an argument with you, you can use their own, not use their own Bible against them, but their own belief system to perhaps explain a bit why you find it hard to to take that belief system into your heart and why your belief system is different shall we say um of course my other whole one was my my favorite one about it, the homosexuality thing in the bible and how uh king james was probably a homosexual <laughs> it was brilliant i absolutely loved it um if you look into it it is actually quite interesting not from the whole attacking a Christian point of view or anything like that. But for how things weren't accepted and how you had to live being a certain status and what was expected of you, not just then, but in, in modern times as well. Uh, but yeah, it, it's very interesting to look into the, well, I find it interesting. I love anything to do with kings and queens of all types not just reigning kings and queens <laughs> i love anything to do with kings and queens um but anyway yes uh, royalty if we're talking royalty kings and queens yes i love anything to do with that as well, especially historically henry the eighth i love anything to do with henry the eighth and you know anne boleyn fascinates me there's a series on tele i think it's just been on and uh, the main character, Anne Boleyn, um, the character was played by the most beautiful woman. And there was a bit of a hoo-ha about it because it was like, <clears throat> how can you pick this woman who obviously looks nothing like Anne Boleyn? And I'm like, well, how do you know? She may look more like Anne Boleyn than some of the other because you, you, you have these old historical films from the 50s and 60s where Anne Boleyn all done up with makeup and, you know, and it wasn't like that. They didn't wear, you know, their hair and beehives and <laughs> beehive styles and stuff. Anyway, the woman who played her was black. 
she was a very beautiful woman of colour. Um, I don't know whether you're allowed to say black now or brown. Or See, I don't know. And I don't want to be offensive. But anyway, she was a beautiful, beautiful black woman. I'm going to use that word, that phrase. And she played the part so well. And the thing is, if you were watching it and watched her as the character rather than just her skin colour, she was probably one of the best Anne Boleyns, I think, ever. Because she played this really strong, determined woman who was really out of her time. And if you sat and watched it as engrossed as I was, you didn't notice a fig about the colour of people's skins in it. I couldn't have told you, if it hadn't been pointed out in the papers before, what colour anyone was <laughs> whilst watching this programme, because she was such... A, a, she gave such a good portrayal, portrayal of what I think Anne Boleyn was like. Anyway, this has totally gone off subject, doesn't it? So anyway, um, <laughs> so yeah, you can see I've, I have been watching some television. Oh dear. Anyway, so yeah, and I don't know where I was going with that in the first place, but there we go. I'm going to punch some holes around here. <laughs> and decide what I'm going to do but I'm not going to do that on camera because it's going to be tediously boring and I think oh dear excuse me I've had a long couple of days and short nights I'm going to bring back the old faithful bit of uh, polystyrene to do it uh, which I think when this is all crushed and no good anymore. I'm going to have to try and make it into something to do with snow. Use it as fake snow in, in a snow globe or something because <laughs> not, a, not a water globe but obviously in a in a shaker card or something something that I can put up during the Yuletide season uh, because I, I, I loathe putting uh, polystyrene in the bin. So anyway, right, I've gone on enough. I'm going to punch my holes and then I'll be back unless I can think of anything else that I want to say concerning uh, anything else. Oh, yeah, I was talking about... That's how I got round to it. I was talking about how interesting it was to see how people were expected to behave in the past. Uh, historically and things like that. That's how it all started, wasn't it? <laughs> Oh my word! Yeah, that's how it started, and um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just went off on a complete tangent, didn't I? <clears throat> and that started because I, I think a lot of people these days are a wee bit passive aggressive, myself probably included. <clears throat> so I know my voice keeps going. I am sorry. It's this laryngitis, it's it's hung on and doesn't want to go anywhere. So yeah, people I think are very passive aggressive. And <clears throat> it's um you you get these little backhanded comments that you know people like to think they are superior to you or they know more than you, and I'm not saying they don't. I'm not saying they are better than me, that they aren't better than me, or I'm not saying that they don't know more than me. What I'm saying is, <clears throat> don't assume you know someone and that they're making a mistake. You, know, you have to consider people, like I said, it's not as an excuse of why they may represent themselves in a, in a, a slightly odd way or an unfavourable way it's not an excuse but it is a reason why they do it it's because of their generation you know their age where they live their family that sort of thing so take all that into consideration I'm not saying don't pull people up on mistakes they make of course not but especially if this if you've been watching this channel a while you should know that I am not anti-anything 
I'm not really against anything. I am definitely a live and let live person, you know, and if you've got certain views then, and that's the views that make your life a, a contented and happy life to live, then those are your, that's what you should stick to for you. <laughs> I'm going to make these holes now. I'm just going to chat. I'm going to make these holes and um, stop ranting on about stuff. Um, so I could put this on to a bit of a fast forward if you wanted me to. But now I've got to decide about, so if I decide where I want my first hole, I want it about there. Crikey, I'm not doing too well today. Right, and I want it about there. So it's coming in one, two, three, four, five sixteenths of an inch. Roughly. Which means, oh, yep, yeah, I think we're going to do all right there. So. Okay, <clears throat> I kind of got carried away and I finished it. <laughs> um, okay, so I did use the paper, the B paper. It's underneath this vintage handkerchief, this handkerchief. Um, oh, crikey, it's from the 1973, 74. It might be from the 1950s, but I'm pretty sure it's... 19... 70s anyway so these I don't know what I'm going to do with yet so I just platted them and left them there um, and this is from what I used to sew the book with um, so this is a vintage handkerchief the papers and the B papers underneath from the old bag and this is also uh, an old bag well not so much an old bag it's just a bag um, and it's a one of those recycled bags you can get made of recycled fabric and it was dyed from a dark green to a cream unfortunately I didn't get it all in what I should have done was when I sewed the bits of fabric together is cut off the overlap on the inside but I didn't anyway so as you can see I did go all the way around and I didn't sew around the corners here because I think that just wears it I just wears it away I just um, sewed a bit here and on the inside of this one um, probably couldn't get a sit but it's just tied in a knot and then um, uh, burnt you know got the lighter to it uh, because it's nylon then I just punched a couple of holes in each side, threaded ribbon through, actually I did the papers first, I did the end papers first, so all I did, I decided there wasn't enough room to do anything fancy here, so all there is is a very tiny, <laughs> there is a, see, and that's the same both sides, um, I, I may do a flip through, um, but you know, it's it's very much. So I'm I'm trying to tie it as tight as I can because <laughs> it's um. Oh no, lost it. Um, yeah, it is still. Okay, yeah, it did come out slightly bulkier than I thought. Um, so and I've already got stains and marks on the covers, and I don't care. So there you go um 
eco fabric eco dyed fabric as well i don't know what it was dyed with um because i didn't dye the fabric uh old bag not so oldish bag handkerchief sewn paper eyelets ribbon done <laughs> so um yes thank you for uh watching and listening to my ranting and gripes and yeah <laughs> and i'll be back um probably in a couple of days um i'm, I'm getting there as, as i said before because this is actually filmed two days after the beginning of this video uh, after i made the holes for this so two days later you're, you know finally got round to doing it <laughs> um yeah so in a couple of days um I, I will sort out the next video installment and i have a couple of i know there are other in, other series i've still got to carry on like the bone casting one i know I, I just didn't carry on with it did i um oh dear oh dear oh dear so yeah, I will, I will, I will do it. I will. It's not like I've got anything else to do, really, is it? Uh, <laughs> so oh crikey, okay, yes. Um, I'm all dis, dis. Uh, what's the word? Mm, I'm flustered. I'm. I keep on getting. I'm off on a tangent. So it's done, and I'll do a flip through another time because it will take quite a while to flip through it, um, as you can see. Even though there's not a lot in it, I didn't do the end. Um, and I've also got to flip through because I'm going to grab some washi tape and anything that's a bit weak, where it's such thin paper, I am going to uh, sort of like repair it as I go. So I'll, I'll do that. Um, so yes, um, there it is. There, there it is indeed. And so the back is the same as the front with cat hair on it. Because, you know, cats. <laughs> and I just used oh I used um textile blue this one new who textile uh just to go round on the outside I mean it's not stuck to the, the the cover exactly but it's to stop it from fraying and then I just put some glue on each of the corners so that the fabric wouldn't fray down anymore there you go that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll be back very soon. Bye for now, witchy people.